Well, another day begins on the brew shed. You can see it's a little bit dark now because I've got the door shut. Uh, that's what we're going to rectify today. Some illumination, some electric, and we did have a nice, well not nice, but we had some rain yesterday, last night, early hours of this morning. And we're watertight. So, let's have a look at some light on the subject let's crack on this is why I didn't want to get too much stuff in here too soon having a little jiggle around to see where things can go and how best they'll work that's my table my burner and my biggest pot and that is how much room I got left above the pot to put an extractor in if I place the uh, the rig at the highest point in the shed. Now I was gonna use an old kitchen extractor fan, which is one of the ones built into a cabinet. It's gonna be far too big. That would be um, right over the top, assuming it fitted in at all. So I'm gonna go to plan B. Well, if you can see the reflection and hear the echo, we have a light. Bit of a compromise, had to go one side or the other. Obviously, it'd be too low on the bottom of the beam. There, but uh, it seems to be here, and I've put one, a drum light on the front entrance way. So it should bounce enough light, I think. If not, we can always add a halogen or something and just feed it off of these this was um, included with the shed so I've just quickly just put some brackets up and just mounted it straight on the top of the shed below the roof it's going to be out of the way that way it's clear of the I'm still not 100% where I'm gonna put the brew pot yet I'm thinking possibly here depends on how far the table comes out down here but um, that's about it for today I think at least I've got some light in here so I can carry on late but uh, we've got to just finish off a little piece down the floor there and then I can put the racking that I've got at the other shed along this side to hold all the bits and bobs and then decide where these um, stainless steel tables are going to live so that I've still got enough room to work around here and work the mash tun and such like. And um, bugger, I need something to sit on as well. Hmm, I have to work on that one as well. Can you see the join? Well, it works. Another old pack of floor laminate. Not quite the same as I colour or length, but um, we've pretty much filled everywhere in, just apart from a little gap there and there. But I think the racks will go there, so you weren't going to see that. So it just gives the floor, spreads the weight of the floor a little bit, tidies it up. Uh, it be easy to wipe clean if there's any minor spillages. And if it needs replacing, it's just a matter of lifting it out, chucking it out, and starting again. I think with a little doormat there, it'd be quite welcoming. <laughs> anyway, how far have we got? Well, that's about it, really. It's been a bit of a thwart two days uh, in between other interruptions and hold ups, but uh, yeah, we can progress on now. We can uh, decide where everything's going, and I've managed to um, rustle up an extractor fan. So, I'll cover that as well, hopefully. Well, I kind of think that's going to have to be the layout. One table across, one table lengthways. Fortunately, they're pretty much the same height. I can put the gas burner there, the big 70 litre pot. 
is there, we've just got this sort of an area where it gives me the greatest height. If I have it over by the window, then the top of the pot is up here and doesn't leave me anywhere to put any fume extraction, even if I put a wall mounted fan on the window, it's going to be below the pot and come out. I'm going to have to move the pot further out, so I've managed to get an inline fan which was serving our bathroom come shower which is due to be uh, gutted and remodelled and judging by the resistor in there it hasn't got much longer to go so we're going to bypass the uh, electronics and because uh, there's obviously a timer one runs on for 15 minutes when you turn the light on which obviously that function we don't need, we need it running all the time so my proposed idea is to utilise the flap in the window put the fan up here somewhere and then have the hose ducted in coming over the top of the kettle and I've got a brand new grill I can put in there so I might be put something up here just above the pot Obviously, this is a waterproof sealed. This is like an aquarium light, so I'm not too worried about condensation coming up on this. Um, of course, I could always move it over this side if not. Um, obviously, I can't use the HLT up on the rack anymore because there's not enough clearance. So, HLT will probably have to be on this, and then just go into the mash tun at low level, and then just lift the. I can probably use one of these, I think I've got another one of these units and put the mash tun on top so we can just uh, run off straight into the mash tun and then when we're ready we could probably lift the mash tun up onto here but then this, the only problem then is doing the sparge unless I get a pump and run the sparge water up via a pump but uh, that's another problem for another day we'll work something out it's more room than what I did have to work with so uh, unfortunately we've got a bit of dead space down here the unit doesn't quite allow for one of those little shelving pieces to go in down there I can't think of any other way to lay out either way whatever way I do it there's enough hose we've got to have an exhaust outlet on the window or at the back wall. The reason I'm choosing the window is uh, if I ever want to change it I can just rip this old piece out and cut a new piece and silicone it back in whereas if I decide to start cutting holes in wood then uh, there's going to be more of a problem to replace it in the future. So I'm trying to keep uh, any exhausting straight out because obviously I'm not intending on keeping this shed as a brew shed forever there are plans very much on the on the drawing board for a much larger purpose-built brewery to come probably in the next 12 to 18 months depending on however things go in uh, with the rest of the property but uh, that's a case of watch this space because I don't know when that's going to happen really but for now this is what we've got Ah, so this is what we're going to have to make do with. Okay, so this is my idea. Use one of these above the kettle. And that will exhaust any excess steam out the pipe. Now the problem is the height of it over the top of the kettle. Now I remembered I had a piece of this stuff, which I used when I made some hoods up where I used to work. Which is a sort of semi-rigid flexible. A bit like that stuff you can get for repairing exhausts. Can't do a huge arc on it, but uh, what you can do with it, as you can see, this is a four inch vent. This pipe is too small. But if you tease it round, you can turn it into a cone. tighten it up on itself. So the idea is that will go into the fan. <clears throat> like that. Well, that's one idea. If not, I've got another old air conditioning 
uh, vent pipe. We'll figure something out. Okay, so after a little bit of jostling, <coughs> figuring out the best way to use what I've got, we've come up with one hole cut through the twin wall with my four inch hole cutter. Knew it'd come in useful one day. The nearest socket feeds the fan across and up. A little bit of a low point there. Fans up there, it's on rubber washers so you don't get too much drumming, humming noise resonating on the shed sides when I'm trying to film in here, or just generally when I'm in here anyway. And uh, then we've got the flexi section through to the grill so we can just point that down like so. Well, this is good as we've got to use short of having a hood that will fit over the whole thing and anything I can find would be too big so it's a case of making do with what we got for now so we've got the lights in, we've got the extraction fan in we've just sort of laid out the general plan of the brewing area so I guess it's time to start to sweeping the floor out, cleaning up and start getting some of my gear in. I have retrieved this cabinet out of my garage so I can put some of the bits and bobs in that now. So I guess we better make a start. Then I'll do that in a second take. Time to get the alarm in. We're pretty much done, thankfully. Just took all of the bank holiday break, plus today, which is Tuesday. Um, we just got some slabs laid outside today and there's no raining again so I just missed that one so we're pretty much there when I've had enough my back is freaking killing me now with the hand digging yeah something I don't like as you well know but there is not a lot of alternative so we've just laid a load of slabs down that I happen to have kicking around and utilise them, get the gas bottles down here. So we're pretty much ready. Well we're pretty much there. Just got a few slabs to get to the other shed. As you can see we've slabbed around the side and front of the shed. We've got the gas bottles in. Now the 47 kilo propane bottles and a 20 just as a backup. A bit windy today. So we've got the rest of the slabs in. Padlock for the shed. Any jobs left to do is I'm just going to put a little piece of trim around the sides and a little cap apron over the top just to stop any driving rain coming in the door. Although we have had two heavy downpours in the last two days and we've been lucky. Nothing at all in the shed. No dampness, no dripping, no pooling the water in the plastic. We can come in, put the bolt and shut the dead shed door, and time for the tour. I think I'll open the door. So, as you can see up there, we've got the alarm panel and siren, and then just a door 
contact magnetic contact switch the only panel in I've ended up putting on is just this old door front that was already with the shed just to mount that light on and that's then looped up across the ceiling to the other one and it's controlled just by that socket rather than putting a proper light switch in there's so many here I might as well use them it saves me rummaging around trying to find other bits we've just got some till hooks screwed in a propane hose is coiled up there so it's just a matter of taking it around and hooking it up to the bottle which is the other side of that wall and the gas pipe just goes along there it's on a couple of cable clips around to the burner which you saw in shot before we've got the extractor fan above we've got my 33 litre Burko I've got two of these but I've got to clean the other one and bring that in that's my HLT I use there's my 30 quart pot which I use for the smaller batches this big pot I haven't christened yet um, there's the little nozzle that comes with it and the hot strainer and the two stainless tables mash tin as I said I managed to find the other little unit and just reduce the size of that so we more or less get the HLT so I haven't got a hose big enough to fit this in but that can um, basically run into the mash tun with the manifold and then when we're ready we can just lift this up onto the table and run it into the brew kettle or just put the brew kettle on the floor and then lift it up that's all I can do at the minute is I haven't got the height to utilize the frame we've got another pot I picked up which is about as big as the other one didn't come with a lid but uh, she's a good size so I'll probably I might so I've got some kegels to convert or kegs to convert into kegels so, um, one of them is going to become my hot liquor tank because there's 50 litre capacity in those and this is a spare 66 litre pot I think so I don't know what to do with this one I might end up sticking it on eBay then I've got another old beat up pot which is probably going to be around the 20 litre mark probably okay for stove top and we did struggle for room for the fermenters the empty fermenters we've got um, two stacked on top another one there the rest of them are on the shelf there we've got the Cooper's pet bottles all stacked up ready to go the old grain crusher mill and I've just got a sieve there what I use for straining as I'm pouring out the wort I strain through this my old stainless steel brew spoon and my spar jam which I made for the mash tun which is yet to be used because um, I've still got to get a pipe to fit from one end to the the bench camper for the bottles and we found an old worktop cut out for a sink that I had in the garage so I just put that on the top of this old storage cabinet I'll get back to that in a minute so we've got the pots and the stands underneath there if you can see it is a wine bottle corker one of them floor mounted ones and by the door yet more fermenters or a fermenter the hose I use for the H uh, coil chillers with the brass fittings on the end which brings me up nicely to those we've got two I made out of 15 mil copper pipe not the easiest thing in the world to bend and use and then we've got the brass hose fittings and tap connectors and obviously I've got an in and an out I can then 
interlink these two. If you watch one of my earlier videos, you can slot the slightly smaller one into this one. And then I use a connecting hose to make the circuit through the two. The old barbecue fork I just use for hop fishing out the hot bags. When I use a muslin bag and uh, you want to retrieve it, I just use that to pluck it back out of the pot. I managed to retrieve myself an old stool out of the loft. That's been set up in the loft for 20 years. Give it a little clean up and a wipe down. We've got somewhere to perch ourselves while we're mashing or boiling. And then we've got the cupboard. And it's an old stationary box. And we've got Brew Buddy in the way, he's now stuck behind the door. So in there we've got uh, a little old biscuit tin full of airlocks. We've got the spare lat stock float for the bear keg. Some iodine. My temperature thermometer. And there's another one below it which if you have got one of those don't bother with them they are very very inaccurate the only thing they're good for is using the timer which is all I keep that for now just as just as a time switch and we've got the refractometer and these why has this guy got Chinese soup spoons in his cupboard because I put a little bit of wart in those and then use them for the iodine set. In these little poster tubes, I just use them to keep the thermometers secure. I've got two of these candy type thermometers, which I use in the pots. Utilise those old cardboard tubes just to um, stop the probes getting bent. We've got a couple of those. We've got one of those electronic gas lighters. Stop the crane caps. Stop the wine corks. A bag of corks at the back. Some drink caps for the wine bottles. One of the uh, little CCO2 powerlets. And below I've just got an old fermenting barrel which I keep for jugs and old grain and hot bags before they're all cleaned out. Yeah. Hand corker, bottle corker for the wine bottles. Spare tap. I've got the uh, sight gauge that's got to go on my new HLT when that's ready. Yeah, it's just a little bucket full of uh, new airlocks and corks and bungs. And and I've got my stainless steel funnel. For those of you that haven't seen it, try and find that picture. Get the lid off. Right, took both hands to get that off, so we're back now. As you can see, it's a stainless steel funnel with a gauze in it. That gauze is removable by that clip, so I can use it as a funnel which is what I do on the grain hopper. Suddenly I've just trebled the capacity of that hopper. That'll now, I think it's three kilos, three and a half kilos, four kilos capacity with that on top of the hopper. Then when I finish with it, I just clean it out, rinse it out, put the gauze back in. Then when I've finished doing my boil, I put this and use that fine mesh screen as a secondary filter to stop all the hot particle coming out. I think that's why I said to one of the guys I don't generally use a hop strainer in uh, in the kettle. I just use that with a sieve. The sieve gets the larger leaf particles and the fines are all caught in the mesh. If it starts to get blocked up then you can just turn your tap off, rinse these out and carry on. You haven't got to worry about um, getting a stuck runoff on your boil cow. So that was a good little find. I don't know what it originally belonged to, but uh, it was brand new in the box and was one of my little bargain finds.
And down the bottom we just got a bowl for cleaning things, some little plastic pipettes just to do refractometer tests and starch tests, just to soak a little bit of the water up. And there we go. Wine filter, one nosy little dog. These clips, get out of the way. These clips I use around a brew pot if I want to do a boil in the bag or something like that. Some more funnels and jugs. In here I've got a large tea infuser. Which you can put hops in and dry hop in your corny keg. Or you can use it in your boil pot. And talk to the corny kegs. I've still yet to get all my gas and everything set up. Because there is a bar build planned in the future. But down here you can see uh, this is the Italian AEB keg. Which is basically the same as the original Cornelius keg. Strange labelling on this one is because it, it started life as a uh, piece of safety equipment with saline solution in just to do it as a eye or body wash in a chemical spill. Never been used. Managed to pick it up for a well cheaper than uh, the lid would be for a replacement. But uh, yeah, we've got to get some more corny kegs from somewhere. Not working on that as we speak. But that. Oh, we've got a box here, which has just got a set of uh, four different stock pots, just for stove top, smaller brews and kit brews. So that's pretty much a tour of the shed as it's finished. A few little jobs just to finish off externally, um, which aren't sort of directly related. So we won't bother updating you on them. So that is really the conclusion of the brew shed. Uh, Water-wise, we're not installing mains water in now because I've basically run out of wall space to fit a tap and have one of these connectors on the outside so you can connect your garden tap on the outside and just have a conventional tap on the inside and dispense your water internally. Um, didn't see the need really in the end. Um, I'd still have to bring the hose down either way um, and obviously if it's going to drip, leak or run off it's going to go on the shed floor and the only thing I'm going to really need it for is either to fill the HLT up or use it for the heat exchanges so I'll just bring me water down the night before run a boil on it and leave it to sit and cool overnight um, and the next day use it for the brew and the cold water feed for the chillers I'll just run the hose down which is what the certain new ones for and then I've got another one uh, for the you know hot water out which I just run out into the garden and use obviously the first discharge of hot water just to clean the brew bins and clean your mash tun out while you're doing your boil I clean the grains out of the mash tun and put it in the old uh, bucket what I just showed you and then use the hot water that's coming out the wart chiller to clean the mash tun ready for the next one so that's it fans in don't know how well it works yet not too noisy so that's it guys thanks for watching any questions you want to ask me on any of the build or anything else just put a message in the comments box. You can find me on YouTube, messaging, Facebook, private message, however you want. And that is it. We are done. Final brew shed. One or two updates probably in future on Brew Wednesdays. But thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it.